Good afternoon, and let me also welcome you to Loyola. It's great to have you all here. My name is Terry Sawyer. I'm the Vice President for Administration, and I oversee a number of administrative departments, including the Department of Public Safety, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Normally, you would have the privilege of having this presentation be given by our uh, Chief of Campus Police. Uh, his name is Colonel Tim Fox. His son graduated from Loyola a few years ago, and now he just graduated medical school, and Tim is attending that graduation. I gave him a kitchen pass for that one. <laughs> medical school graduation definitely counts. So I'm here to talk to you uh, about that, but I'm sure you'll meet Tim. He's a, he's a retired Army colonel, uh, and he's right out of central casting. You would know it right when you see him, that that's what he did for a job. <laughs> And the students love him, and he's a very colorful character. I am a much safer presenter, I promise. He, he tends to say things that you apparently all enjoy, but it gives us as administrators heart attacks. So, um, so anyway, here we go, a little bit on public safety. Let me just point out that I've been at Loyola for 16 years. Um, just this morning, uh, someone asked me how long I'd been here, and I said 16 years, and they said, not joking, that I must either really love it here or not be a very ambitious person. Um, it's that I really love it here. Um, I am originally from northern New Jersey, uh, but now I live here in Baltimore. I live very close to this campus, as does our president, Father Lenane, as does Dr. Horton, who lives walking distance. Our executive vice president lives in walking distance. So this is not just where we work, but this is where we live. This is our community. So public safety is not only something that's very important for our students, but also for us, because again, like I said, this is where we, this is where we live. This is our neighborhood. So many of you are not from around here, and so you probably have different perceptions about Baltimore. Um, if you have HBO, you definitely have different perceptions about Baltimore. So I'm here to tell you that by all reasonable measures, Loyola is a very safe campus, and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about that. And Baltimore is a wonderful city. I love living here. Uh, I'm raising my family here. We enjoy the city, and it can be done very safely. And we're going to be talking to your students really more so when they move in. We spend a lot of time on move-in weekend, weekend talking about how we want you to engage in, in, in the city. Jesuit institutions are in cities for a reason. We want to be able to encounter what um, Father Kolvenbach calls the gritty realities of urban life, but we want to be able to do that in a safe, in a safe manner. So we have a multi-tiered approach to um, how we uh, do public safety at Loyola. And the first thing we have is our, is our campus police force, which is sort of highlighted down here. We have uh, campus police officers. They are commissioned by the Maryland State Police, so they are real police officers. They have arrest authority and all the other authority that any police officer would have, but only on Loyola's property. So if they're at the mall, they're not police officers. But here, they are police officers. And we have 44 of them. That's a lot for a campus this size, but we want to make sure that there's a lot of police presence, that people that are visiting understand it's not a police state, but that people that are visiting understand that we have men and women that are charged primarily with the public safety of your sons and daughters. We want students to be safe, but we also want them to feel safe. We want them to feel that they can walk around and not have to be concerned um, all the time about their safety. And so we have this very robust, well-trained campus police force. We augment that with what are our part-time off-duty Baltimore City Police officers. We have a somewhat unique arrangement with the commissioner of Baltimore City Police, where we hire Baltimore City Police officers. They wear their Baltimore City Police uniforms, they're armed, and, but they're working at our direction. They're, they're technically off-duty, but if you encountered one, you wouldn't know it. But they're working for us. And we use them for our perimeter, for where I like to say where the cows roam. Sometimes we know students go in certain areas and we want to make sure that that path is somewhat protected. Now, there's a limit to that protection. We don't go all the way down to Fells Point. We don't go to the Inner Harbor. We don't patrol Camden Yards or Raven Stadium. But in areas around campus where we know students go, where our campus police do not have authority, we hire Baltimore City Police to do that. Just want to spend a quick second on the role of a campus police officer. Their main primary function is to keep the Loyola community members safe. But in doing that, we also have to enforce the rules. I mean, we believe that an orderly campus is essential to have a safe and, 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 and appropriate place to go to school. So that means enforcing rules and sometimes laws. This can sometimes create a little tension in the, in the minds of the students of why are campus police here? Are they here to sort of rain on their parade and take away their fun? Or are they here to protect them? The answer is to protect them, but sometimes in doing that, you have to sort of save them from themselves occasionally. But we try to do that, you're gonna hear this a lot over the next two days, in an educative manner. We try not to be overly punitive. We want things to be educative and have them learn from, and most of them won't, but some of them will make mistakes. 
So we want them to learn from that. So that's the human element of our, of our uh, security uh, procedures here. We also are aided by technology. We have over 90 emergency phones on campus. These are what we call blue light phones. So if you're walking on campus and for whatever reason you feel distressed, I'm almost certain that within a reasonable proximity to where you are, there's a blue light phone. If you pull that, there's like a blue like police light that goes off. It's very noticeable. It goes immediately to our base operations system, which is our dispatch. Those are officers that are there all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week to take your phone call. And you speak through a speaker, so you don't have to pick anything up. It records it if you're not even all that close. And then there's a camera that goes on that phone so we can see exactly what's going on. These almost never get pulled, which is a good sign. When Usually when they do get pulled, it's not for a real reason. It's, I just wanted to see if it worked, um, you know, which they do. We test them. You tell your sons and daughters they don't need to check that. Um, and then... In addition to the phones, we have 540 cameras on campus. Some you'll notice, some that you won't. Um, this is not Big Brother watching you, but almost every public space on the campus is uh, patrolled by a camera or sur surveyed by a camera. Again, we have very, very little crime that happens on this campus. Um, to be honest, and this will probably be talked to about later, the cameras are really used often in, in retrospect to find out who pulled the fire alarm on the fifth floor of Newman Towers, or who's consistently throwing toilet paper down the stairwell at Ahern. But they are a public safety measure, and they also serve as a deterrent. I think people understand and know that there's cameras and that they're being monitored 24 hours a day. So um, I also want to talk a little bit about um, our communication in the event of a crisis. Um, we have. Um, what we call the Loyola Emergency Notification System, or LENS, and this has several different components. The first is E2 Campus. This is a text messaging system. Your sons and daughters will be asked to give us their cell phones, and then they will get text messages in the event of an imminent threat, which I'll define in a minute. If you would like to, and I urge you to discern on this before you say yes, but if you would like to also get the text message in Boston or wherever you are. Granted, there's not much you can do from there, but if you want this information, just put your, have your number put there as well. You can put as many numbers as you want. And if you want that information, you're more than happy to do that. We're more than happy to share that with you. A, a um, immediate uh, threat, an ongoing threat, is the only time you'll get a text message. So, for example, if there was a tornado that was possibly going to hit near campus within the next half an hour, you would get a text message that said, take cover, do whatever we tell you to do. If it already happened and there's nothing we can do, you're not going to get a text message. You would get an email about that. The reason for that is that we don't want students to stop looking at the phone if they think it's something that they don't absolutely need to know about. So if you get a text message from E2 Campus, our students know you need to pay attention because something is happening now that they need to be aware of. Again, to put you at ease a little bit, this, we very, very rarely, if ever, have to use this system, which we're very fortunate about, and it's usually for weather emergencies. We don't really have tornadoes here, but we've had a few tornado warnings. And believe it or not, we actually had an earthquake here a few years ago, which was kind of odd, um, but very rarely happens. But nonetheless, this is an important system. We use the Loyola network email to let students know um, if there are trends going on, public safety announcements, anything that we want them to know for their information, but it doesn't require, require them to do anything in the moment. And quite frankly, we know students check email less and less. So text messaging is the best way to, for us to get in touch with students in the event of an imminent situation. And then lastly, we have a public address system. We test this every month. It's one of the highlights of my month when the public address system gets tested. It's very loud. We can communicate with audible commands at really any place on the campus, including outdoors. There's no place on campus where you could go and not hear the message. So again, this is a way for us to communicate with students um, very quickly. We do a lot of training. We do a lot of uh, talking with your students. It'll happen in the residence halls as well as public safety forums and things like that. So our students are well prepared. Um, and we have, as I hope you see, a lot of infrastructure in place to keep your kids safe, your sons and daughters safe. But there is nothing that we can do, there's very little we can do, I should say, to offset really bad decisions and really bad judgment. Going to an ATM by yourself in an area you're not familiar with at 3 o'clock in the morning is just not a good idea in any city, not just Baltimore. Now, we will talk to your sons and daughters about this, but we encourage you also to have uh, conversations with, um, with uh, your students about 
as we would say where I grew up, being street smart. So uh, that's something that we'll try to work on too, but I think when they hear it at home, it's also important and it reinforces what we're trying to talk about. So a few, a few quick things on my end for the talk on the way home. Statistically, the biggest threat we deal with actually is not bad guys in Baltimore City, it's fire. Um, we have high-rise dorms and it's, we have a very sophisticated fire suppression system. We actually do fire drills, which your sons and daughters will love. Um, but if you think about how big Newman Towers is, if a fire alarm goes off in Newman Towers, that whole building, that whole building, building has to empty. And they often go off, usually not one o'clock in the afternoon. Why do they go off? Because it doesn't take 45 minutes to cook microwave popcorn. Because pizza boxes are flammable. Um, so well, I thought I could heat it up, not in the box. So we have, we will talk to them about this. But again, if you could talk, if they have no cooking experience at all, most of them are gonna have kitchens. We urge you to give them maybe a little tutorial, 101. Here's how you make macaroni and cheese. Really, and it is kind of funny, but the fire department hate it. We empty that building a lot because of fire alarms that go off. Now we want it to go off and we also don't want students to get desensitized to leave in the building. So we have worked a lot and have lowered the number of fire alarms, but it's still too high. So, so that's important. I mentioned this, this might seem like an odd thing to mention, but this comes up, it really bothers students, I don't know exactly why, but students will be asked and they'll think it's random and they'll think, well it is random, but they'll think they're getting picked on. We ask students for their ID. Campus police will, they'll go up and say, excuse me, can I see your ID? This is an open campus. We don't have a wall and a gate that you have to come through. We want to know if you belong here or if you don't belong here. And if you're not a student here, that's fine, but what are you doing here? Just tell us. We have a need to know. And so um, we will ask students for their ID, and sometimes students will get very agitated. Again, we're going to talk to them about this, but we just want you to know we're not giving them a hard time. We just want to make sure that the people that are here have a legitimate reason to be here. Um, Social media, I think there's more on this later uh, in their orientation, but this is exploding as the greatest concern. You know, we don't, we never, we didn't even talk about this a few years ago, and now we find that students can get in real trouble with the misuse of, so, of social media. Texting, um, uh, see, I'm showing my age, I, I, I've, I've been blocked at texting. Um, what else, there's Facebook and Twitter and all, the, and all these things, and students have a tendency to, uh, think that these things aren't, go aren't going to be seen and they're not going to be noticed and that they're under the radar. They're serious, they can get themselves in trouble and so there'll be more to come on social media and how to stay out of trouble with that. And then what we see when students get in trouble um, or get themselves in situations where good judgment's not being used, alcohol is often involved. Um, there's going to be more talk throughout the course of this two-day orientation about alcohol and Loyola's position on it. Uh, this is not a problem or issue that's exclusive to Loyola. This is something that uh, occurs at most colleges and university campuses. I think we have a very progressive way of dealing with it, but um, again, we will talk to your sons and daughters about uh, how alcohol often puts them in situations where their public safety can be compromised. So um, again, we think about this every day. We take the responsibility of making sure that your sons and daughters have a safe place to go to college because all of the rest of the great things we do fly out the window if they're not safe, and we recognize that. So we think about it every day. We care a lot about it, and we work to make sure that we're doing the best we can to keep everybody safe. And again, like I said, statistically, this is a very, very safe campus. Baltimore is a very livable, uh, enjoyable city and um, we hope that everybody has a great time and we'll do our best to keep them safe. So um, I'll be on the panel tomorrow to answer any of your questions. You can think about this, and if you see anything when you're walking around campus that causes you concern, I'll be back tomorrow to ask questions, but now, or to answer questions. But now I have the privilege of introducing the Associate Vice President for Student Development, Dr. Donnie Cook.